We are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show. We answer that and more. I'm Stephen Jack Buzala. And I'm Jill DeWitt, and this is the Land Academy Show. This is episode number 2030, and today's topic is we're going to go through land deal funding by the numbers, and we'll ultimately uh, show you how much money you can really make without starting with a penny. Uh, and my favorite part of this exercise is your bank balance. You start with zero, and you do a deal, you split it, you make 25 grand, you split it, do another one, you make 50, and then after a few months of doing this successfully, you're going to be staring at a few hundred thousand dollars in the bank. This has happened to me multiple times, actually. It continues to happen to us without actually putting a dollar in. Mm-hmm. So that's the uh, beautiful end ending to the the story and we'll talk about that some of the things that can go right some of the things that can go wrong and where the challenges are and, and all of that uh, this week the theme to this entire uh, week is uh, everything you need to know about funding your land or your house flip transaction something Jill and I know a little bit you know, about I didn't put it in there right now I should I should point out though I look at land and houses if you just go to landfunding.com let's put it in there whether it's land or house we can and you're like you're like all right I got one right now that's why I'm listening to you guys I waited till Tuesday for you to tell me this or so, my old partner sucks and I want a new one that too there you go or let's try one deal see how it goes yeah, yeah. put it in there I'll give you or just you know I'll give you the feedback or we'll do the deal each day on the show, we answer a question uh, from our Land Academy member Disco- uh, Discord forum and take a deep dive into land-related related topics at your suggestion. Joe, so let's uh, take a question. Okay. Jenny wrote, hello, all. I have a newbie question. I have a signed purchase agreement for a property that looks promising, but my offer was too high. Purchase price, $16,000. What I'd actually like to buy it for is somewhere between eight and $11,000. Is it possible to negotiate a lower price when the seller has already signed the purchase agreement? How do you approach that? And then part two is, the person who signed this identified themselves as executor. So it appears the owner has passed. So you know, um, I'm gonna jump in here. The first thing I would do, Jenny, is part two. Before you even go down the path of talking to them and looking at it, getting all excited, working on a price and having that locked in, let's first make sure that the person you're communicating with does have the power to transfer the property. Uh, Let's assume for this exercise that they do. Probate was done. Um, or it's in a trust, all the documents are in order, and they are the right person. So, because that's really, really important. Now, what do I do about that purchase price? Well, what are the reasons? You know, you have reasons right now, you didn't put them in here, but why are the reasons that you're saying it's too high? Is it access is not as great as it could be? Is it the property has some issues like I, it's 10 acres, but I can only use four because of the hill in the back, you know? So that's the first thing I look at is why are you uh, rethinking your price other than I just came in too high, I, other than I goofed it up or, you know, what the assessor, there was some stuff in there with the county that it made it go funky. So, and I would use those things as the facts as to why. Um, And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, hey, so here's how the conversation would go. Let's just assume, so I offered 16, they signed it, they're all excited, they sent it back, and I look at it, I go, shoot, it's not as close to this town, I can only use four of the 10 acres, and uh, there's, gosh, there's just not much out there. So I still like it, but... And, and I'm looking at the math right now. I think I could sell it, you know, for somewhere between 16 and 20. So I can't pay 16 to buy it. So I need to get it at eight. So this is where you call the seller back and go, we got to talk. And often, <laughs> in some, some situations, if they know the property, they're ready for it. They go, oh, I thought this was going to happen. It's funny how, how often that comes up. And you go, look. And you give them those three things, not 30 You give them two to three things, that's it. Like, I really thought it was closer to the town. After I looked at it and I saw the flood zone, I don't know if you're aware of that or not, but the six of the acres, you know, are underwater half the year. I can't use those. So it's really only four. And then the third thing is fill in the blank. And go, you know, I do still like the property, but 
now the best I can do, and I, gosh, I hate to do this too. I hate to be that guy. Um, but I really, it's really not, doesn't command that $16,000 purchase price. It does command eight. And if that works for you, boy, I am ready to go. I have Susie at ABC title all set up and uh, I can get this done actually in 10 days and I'm still going to honor everything that I said in my letter. I'll pay the closing costs and all that. So how about I open escrow and I'll just send you everything over and just get your new purchase agreement in your email in two minutes. That's how you do it. To answer your question uh, directly, Jenny, I thought that uh, was directly. It, you know, negotiating, renegotiating <laughs> a price happens very often. So you're not, this is not an unusual situation. Mm-hmm. There's no such thing as a perfectly priced mailer. People think that a lot. People think that, and you know, if you if you spend a ton of time, months pricing your mailer, that you're, they're going to get a better response and it's all going to be a beautiful peaches and cream. But the fact is, I price a mailer, I send it out, probably at least half, maybe more, or uh, probably more than half. Jill has to go in and make some type of adjustment based on their personal situation. In this case, it's an executor scenario. Hopefully, there's a trust. There's a bunch of things going on here. That's good for price reduction. So, it's what Jill said. The deals are unique. Mm-hmm. Today's topic, land deal funding by the numbers. How much uh, money can you actually really make? All right. So, Yesterday, I used the example of uh, what buy for ten and sell for sixty. I think there's fifty thousand dollars of profit in the deal. Uh, I went through the education, Land Academy education. I got myself signed into Discord, asked a bunch of questions, and it's six months later. I got a mailer out, and I got a deal. So it's buy for ten, sell for sixty with fifty thousand dollars of profit, and I don't have any money. And I and I knew that going in, and I don't feel bad about it. I need a funder. So I call Jill or I go to landfunding.com and I put the deal in there. Jill likes the deal. I generated $50,000 to do the deal. She gets 25, I take 25 and I put it in the bank, send out another mailer and I do the same thing. And now I have $50,000 in the bank. Again, 75, again, now I have a hundred grand in the bank and it's a year later. This is very realistic and accomplishable. That's going slow. That's going really slow. That's really slow. slow. I'm, I'm being. Yeah, I'm talking. This usually here. be one a month. <laughs> right. All right. So the end of the year, I have two hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Do mm-hmm. I need Jill anymore? Nope. Mm-hmm. I can continue to do deals with her. I chose to continue to do deals with her. You can do that. You can continue to have a lifelong funding partner that way. In fact, we would, in that case, even adjust the percentage. Mm-hmm. Instead of splitting the deal 50-50, we would probably bring it down to some other percentage because you know what you're doing now. You've got some experience. You know. You don't Every, need me. Everybody knows what, it's really fast. what they're to expect from the other partner. There's probably not a lot of talking by now. Mm-hmm. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. So certainly we're going to... But my point is, that's what's possible. The mm-hmm. point is not to... You know, people get hung up on, I'm not giving away 50% of the profit margin in this deal. It, but it's not just... If I went to Bank of America and got a loan... Mm. I'm not getting any expertise. I'm not, when something goes sideways, I call a bank, they're going to say, what are you talking about? If your deal went sideways, that's too bad. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't even take the call. Right. So there's a lot more involved uh, than that. But you can expect if you're good at uh, executing what's in Land Academy and executing the education, Land Academy and turning it into money for yourself, you can expect to make hundreds of thousands of dollars systemically with uh, a, a funding partner until you believe you don't need that person anymore. Land Academy is packed full of people that we heard a lot from in the beginning when they joined. They asked a lot of questions. They were very uh, vocal in uh, on our Thursday webinars, and uh, they're still in the group years and years later making tons of money. Quietly. How do we know that? And they're that? the bank. How now. do we know that? Because yeah. we own a printing company called Offers to Owners. And we see that they're sending out tens of thousands of offers every single month. Well, that's the normal progression. People come in and they like you just you just painted that beautiful picture. You know, twenty five thousand dollars at a time, you and they come up for air and they go, Oh, now I have two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I can either A keep going like I'm doing it, B not don't borrow anybody, don't use any partners, keep it all to myself. C I could, huh, I could do a little bit of both. A lot of people do that. Like I'll do mine when I run out of dough. I'll do some of these with Jill, whatever it is. And then the other thing they often do is, now I can be the bank for somebody else. I can be on that end of it. I'll fund somebody's deal. I'll put in the 
10, 15, whatever it is, and split the profit with some new person. That's really common. And I know there's people in Land Academy that that's the only reason they're here. They don't even want to send out mail. They just know how smart our group is and they want to be the bank and, and be the funding partner for these with for our people because these deals are that good. That's great, Jack. So it sounds really easy and uh, peaches and cream. And I, every, why doesn't everybody do it? Here's why. This only works if you have a dynamic personality and you can create a real estate transaction that's below its current value. How does that happen? By having a personality like Jill, by having some type of skill set, you might be brand new and you don't even know you have the skill set yet. You might be a real estate agent who's been uh, helping people buy and sell houses for 30 years and you know you have a dynamic personality. You've been on the phone for 10 hours a day for many, many years. If you have that type of personality where you can bring people together, when things go sideways, make them uh, straighten out again and make things go your way, then you're going to do great at this. But if you sit in a dark hole, and, like I do, and crunch numbers all day uh, and, and are happy with that, it's going to be very difficult uh, for you to, to really do well for yourself financially in this business without having a partner like Joe. Thanks. So I'm being, that's the... You know, everybody says, what's the catch? What, you know, why doesn't everybody do it? You guys describe it. It's so easy. Yeah. You have to have a dynamic personality and some experience on the phone or that or that type of personality. Thank you. Tons of money can be made here. Jill and I do millions of dollars a year net mm -hmm. buying and selling real estate. I tee it up and she gets a deal done and we have staff. It's it's funny the right partner the right partner when you someday tell them well I'm good now it's <laughs> trust me trust me it's hard for them it's because I've been on both ends of it I've had to tell people like I don't need your money right now you know and and uh, they let them down a little bit and then on the other side they say I don't need your money anymore I'm like yeah I was waiting for that to happen you know it's when I'm telling them go get two more of those can you please or you know, ten more of those. And they're like, I, I got this. Thank you. Um, but it, it's it's good. That's why we always say it's a great point to think about it. When you retain a partner, do not, under any circumstance, form an LLC with them. Yes. Uh, so you're fifty percent, they're fifty. Don't ever do any of that stuff, and because you don't, you know, you need to go on a date first to see if you're going to get married, and you want to do a couple, of one deal first, split it another deal split it and you know we you know what you could happily do that for the rest of your life mm -hmm. but co-mingling all of that where where everybody gets uh debit cards and there's money in a bank account it's good split. point what a disaster okay. we've done that joe and i've done that with each other uh and we've done it with other people and it's just i've done it with other people i don't think you have mm -hmm. many many years ago and we won't make that mistake twice. Totally. You know what? And tomorrow we're going to talk about it because tomorrow's topic is, you know, we've done so many land deals that we've we've funded. We're going to talk to you about how they really go step by step by step. You're like, you don't mingle your money? Nope. We'll, we'll explain it all tomorrow. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. 